right? Was using it okay. somewhere else. Okay, there we go. Good evening and welcome to February 27th, 2023 City Council meeting. I am Mayor Ross and tonight's City Council meeting is being recorded and will be available on the city's website. Welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, city Clerk, would you please call the roll? Council Member Benson? Here. Council Member Watton? Here. Council Member Holloway? Here. Council Member Mayhew? Here. Council Member Christensen? Here. Council Member Johnson? Here. Mayor Ross? I am here. Thank you very much. City Clerk Dean? So please stand and join us in the singing of the Pledge of Allegiance. And we will ask Councilor Christensen, would you please lead us in the pledge? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we now move on to our first item of the regular business is to approve the agenda. Council may have a motion to approve the agenda as, as shown. So moved. Second. This is moved by Councilor Watton, second by Councilor Christensen to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. This motion has it and the um, agenda is approved. So our first order of business is AB 23-021, proclamation 23-03, March 2023 as Resilience Month. So March 2023 marks the fourth year that the City of Snoqualmie and Empower Youth Network have teamed up to proclaim March Resilience Month in the Snoqualmie community, encouraging everyone to work towards a community of hope and healing. So whereas the City of Snoqualmie recognizes the importance of a community conversant in adverse childhood experiences, the effect of ACEs, trauma, and toxic stress on the developing brain, and how resilience building strategies buffer these predicted negative impacts. And whereas newest Washington State research suggests that building community resilience by increasing the opportunities for mutual support, hope, help, and healing, and ways to feel safe and connected within all our neighborhoods and community is beneficial, and whereas promoting community engagement to learn more about ACEs and to learn how to inter interrupt the impact of ACEs by learning about and applying protective factors and resilience through our partners, agencies, and schools and families. Now, therefore, I, Catherine Ross, Mayor of Snoqualmie, do hereby recognize the importance of the coalition work of the Valley Resilient Friends of Youth, Care Point Clinic, Trail Youth Coffee House, Encompass, Empower Youth Network, Valley, Snoqualmie Valley Transportation, Reclaim Stability, Snoqualmie Valley YMCA, and the Snoqualmie Valley School District, and many other organizations working together toward a community of hope and healing and proclaim March 2023 as Resilience Month. And so I know that we, you can read the full proclamation online and join us tonight is um, Michelle John from Youth Resilience and Community Research Resource Coordinator with Trace Empower um, Youth Networks. Ms. John, would you like to say a few words? Hi, yes, I am Michelle. I work with the Empower Youth Network. Um, I am both a, res um, a family resource coordinator as well as the co-facilitator of the Valley Resilient Group. And we'd just like to thank you all uh, for your continued leadership of the uh, city of Snoqualmie. Um, and surrounding areas um, and really appreciate the continued commitment to building a more trauma-informed, hope-centered community. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will provide time for residents to comment on items on the agenda. First, a few ground rules. So call me residents who are not present have the right to have their elected representatives perform their duties on behalf of the city in an efficient and orderly manner. So therefore we will limit comments to three minutes each. Please wait to be recognized and state your name and city of residence on the record. 
direct your comments to the council as a whole and not to individual members. Um, please note that this is not a time to ask questions of council, mayor, or staff, or to engage in debate. So the council will quietly and respectfully listen to your concerns. So with that, would anyone like to speak to any concern that is not on the agenda this evening? Mr. Fletcher. Maybe. It's been a while, let's see if I can get through this. Yeah, there you go. Is it working? Okay. So uh, mayor, council, I'm here tonight as a member of the Civil Service Commission for the city of Snoqualmie. Oh, I'm supposed to, yeah, I'm Fuzzy Fletcher, 7749 Maple Avenue, Southeast Snoqualmie. Um, and so I just uh, wanted to give you a few points. We've, um, we have our own rules and regulations. It's on the city website, but I'll leave this copy with um, the city clerk in case anybody wants a paper copy for it. So with that, what I'd like to say about it is the commission and staff reviewed this document from cover to cover. Um, the re we started in December 2020 and wrapped up in November of 2022. Thank you, COVID-19. However, there was a lot of work uh, with it and a, a couple different chairman changes, um, but we stayed with it. it. The core group was the same group, and so we stayed with it. Um, this final version, after um, it was reviewed by uh, the City Legal Council, was sent outside for outside independent evaluation and then brought back and we accepted the changes that were between the two attorneys um, that they had come up with. Um, so we, the last time this level of review was done was in 2014, and we, as a commission, adopted this document in February of this year. Um, so a few of the changes was we aligned all the wording in here to align with the Open Public Meetings Act, the collective labor agreements, and the RCWs. So we can, we don't, there was a lot of different things in there, and we were all over the places to trying to figure out how to tie it together. So now we've got it all tied together. We removed redundant language, and we clarified how the civil service secretary is appointed by the commission. Um, previous rules have implied that the mayor appointed them, and we ratified it. We've actually, um, there's never been a, a, a time that I know of where that hasn't happened that way. However, the commission has made it so now that we have a right to say no, basically, and, the, and the, so that the mayor would then appoint somebody else and we can keep going through that till we find somebody we like. Like I said, there's never been an issue. The first one comes across has historically always been accepted by the commission, but for future things, we wanted to have that language in there. Uh, so the previous hiring list for public safety, whether it be police or fire, had three names on it. So if we were hiring one person, there'd be three names. If we were hiring two people, you could have four names. Um, but with the, the climate of, of um, hiring and employment nowadays, we felt the larger pool would be better because sometimes we'll get in there and get one or two people. And by the time the, you know, the chiefs are going through their interviews, we're already to hire them. They're, whoop, they're gone to a different department. So what we've done is we the rules now authorize five names plus one for every additional person. So we get a larger pool to work with and we stand a better chance of actually hiring somebody after going through all the processes and spending the time and, and, and all the energy to, to go through that section. The last thing that I'm really, really happy about um, was the Civil Service Commission are now invited to witness and um, and or sit on the panel. Um, and so every since we've been, um, started doing this, there's been a civil service commissioner that was invited and sat on every interview panel. And what this does in my mind is it allows for the city to say there's citizen involvement in the hiring of our public safety appeal people it's a really transparent thing to be able to see there's other cities that don't do that it's all done internally and then the citizens get to know after the fact hey look what we did whereas this case there's somebody that it goes through the entire process so um they do the interview panel then then the um, the civil service commission gets the group of names and then we vote on the, those names and those names go forward to the chief's interview which is the next in the hiring process Great. so with that being said i'll turn this over to deanna for if you guys want to print a copy and say thank you very much great thank you for your work on that thank you very much you. A whole lot of people work on it. yes thank you. appreciate that thank you is there anyone else in the council chambers that would like to have public comment anybody online if so please raise your hand Not seeing anyone in council chambers, nor anyone online for additional public comment. All right. 
Now we move on to the consent agenda, which contains approval of City Council meeting minutes of February 13th, 2023, regular meeting. Claims approval, report dated February 27th, 2023, and AB 23-030, amendment number two with RH2 engineers for utility system plans. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by, by Mayor Pro Tim Holloway, second by Councilor Johnson. Is there any public comment regarding the any items that are on the consent agenda? If so, please raise your hand online or in, in council. I'm not seeing anyone raise their hands online, and there's no one, um, nor anyone in council raising their hands. Okay, is there any discussion regarding any of the items? Councilor Johnson. Uh, yeah, when I was looking at uh, our discussion about uh, the uh, waiving the council rules of procedure 9.6.2.2 and adopt the ordinance 1274, this is at the very top, the very first thing on page three of uh, the minutes. Uh, sorry, I should have said that. Yes, in the minutes. Um, I believe that that vote uh, failed um, three to two and that uh, Benson and I were the two that voted against and that uh, it was Christensen one and uh, Holloway who voted for and it failed because we needed two thirds vote. Yeah, I believe that, that that's weird. what happened. That looked weird to me too. I, okay. I didn't understand the, the way it, I read either. I just didn't have the guts to bring it up like you did. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so on uh, at the very top of page three, just so we're all looking at it. Um, and yeah, that part right there at the very top. I think that that one's supposed to be failed three to two because we needed two thirds majority and three two wouldn't be a two thirds majority. And so it would have been the other three that were present that voted for. We always, no, I think we it's showing who the failed. failed. It's showing the and, people who voted against. And who votes against. We always list who votes against. Oh, okay. I misunderstood that. Right. Okay. So you're right. Well, then I guess it's fine then. <laughs> okay. Any other comments on any of the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? All right. Next item is AB 23-027. 2023 to 2024 biennial budget amendment appropriation to cover the retention incentive pay program for eligible employees from the Nukwami Police Association and the International Association of Firefighters, Local 2878 employee groups. This is the second reading of Ordinance 1274. Mayor Pro Tim Holloway, would you please read the summary and motion? Well, uh, we introduced it before, so I'll just read the motion. That's fine. Okay. Motion to authorize. Uh, the first reading pertaining to adoption of ordinance 1274 amending well amending the 2023 2024 biennial budget set forth in the second reading which is tonight and adopting at the February 27th 2023 City Council meeting so may I have a motion for adoption please second these motions were should have been updated for this <laughs> move by Mayor Pro Tim Holloway and second by Councilor Johnson is there any public comment regarding the this ordinance I'm not seeing anyone raise their hands in city hall and not seeing anyone raise their hands online um council is there any discussion okay seeing none all those in favor say aye 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 aye, aye. aye. okay thank you. any opposed nay all right, so moving on to committee reports. Is there a report from Public Safety Committee? Uh, not at this time. Report from Community Development Committee? No report. So Parks and Public Works, the first committee report is from, um, is AB 23-016, resolution 1635, ratifying the third two-year extension of the comprehensive garbage, recyclables, and compostables um, collection agreement with waste management. Councilor Benson, would you please read the summary and motion? Yeah. Purpose of this agenda bill is to address the third and final two year extension of the city's comprehensive garbage recyclables and compostables agreement with waste management. The current extension term will end on May 31st, 2023. Notice of the decision must be given to the city 
uh, by the city to waste management at least 90 days prior to the expiration of the new renewal term. Move to approve the resolution number 1635, exercising the option for the third two-year extension of the comprehensive garbage, recyclables, and compostables collection agreement. Do I have a second? Second. So it's moved by Councilor Vincent, second by Councilor Watton. Is there any public comment regarding this item? So, so please raise your hand. I'm not seeing anyone online or in council chambers. Okay. Um, Councilor, is there any, any discussion? Or we do have, um, we could have a further information from staff. Uh, we, we discussed it uh, in, oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, sorry. Councilor Benson. We discussed it Mr. in Chair. committee a lot. We uh, feel like we need to spend the next couple of years getting a good deal uh, negotiated with waste management or whomever um, because we're down to the last two, uh, two years here. No more extensions after this. Councilor, or, yeah, Councilor Mayhew. Yeah, just um, curious. Um, this seems like a, um, a good uh, idea for the city to do this, um, as it did two years ago when we extended it. We did it on consent agenda then. I'm just curious uh, if there's, I'm just curious why it wasn't on consent agenda. Is there some point of uh, disagreement here? Maybe the chair could comment on that. Uh, yeah. Um, Councilor Benson? Uh, it's, it's not on consent because there's urgency here. We need to uh, make sure that this is in front of everybody and everybody's aware that we need to, we need to get moving on getting the new agreement figured out. Thank you. Councilor Christensen. Um, so it's my understanding that rates are gonna be redone in the next two years. So I, and that's countywide based on the actions taken by King County in light of the REPLUS program where they're gonna have to recalculate the amounts that we're, folks are paying. So if we're extending the contract for two years then it's gonna end in 2025 and we're supposed to have moved forward with the recalculation of the rates over the next 12 months, which is my understanding of what we're supposed to be doing, how will, the, will extending the contract until 2025 work within that framework? So waste management hasn't really told us exactly what their plan is everybody's still trying to wrap their head around the, the new way that king county wants to do it and and it's quite complicated um the majority of the discussion so far has been trying to convince king county to kind of streamline it a little bit so it's a little easier and, and clear why this is all happening um but that change is coming. Um, I haven't reviewed the entire contract in length, but I'm assuming that there's pass through language in the in the document. Once we get the notice from waste management, my intention is to discuss it with legal to make sure it's an appropriate charge according to the existing contract. So um, to be continued is the answer I can give you tonight. Okay. But until we get until we actually get correspondence from waste management telling us exactly what they want to do, I can't go to legal and say, is this meet the contract? At your point, there is pass through from King County Ways, yeah. Waste Division, and there's also a um, CPI index. So you will see increases, but they're just not changing the overall pricing based on new quotes. Um, Councilor Christensen. And then I was just gonna um, ask as we move forward with that, it's my understanding that King County also authorized grants to go to some of the cities and work with um, consultants with Waste Management, Republic and Recology and that basically the language that they figured out for the new rates as they come in are documents that can be publicly shared. So I would just encourage us to reach out and make sure that we have that additional information which hopefully should help us streamline the process as well. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Mayor Pro Tem Holloway. And I at least want to, there was analysis done of uh, comparable, comparable uh, waste services with North Bend, King County, a couple other ones. Um, there's been some significant increases in some of our 
uh, sister organizations as far as what they're doing for waste management. That's another reason why we thought this was a good to go ahead and do the extension to maybe forestall some of those uh, other increases. The other thing is um, it takes a while to bring a new waste management service into a city. There is capital investment on the part of the service provider uh, to do the exchange and there's coordination to make the transition smooth between what could be two separate organizations ch changing services. Um, given that, we really encourage staff that once we get this in place, we start that two years is about the right time to start having those discussions and figuring out where we're going to be two years from now and if we have to go through that process of changing services. So uh, as, Ken, as Chair said, we ought to quickly look to see what we can do on rates and how we can best serve the citizens. Uh, the other comment I'd like to make, I, I'd rather more entertain a question of uh, why something should come off the consent agenda than why is it not on the consent agenda when any council member can ask for it to be off. I asked for this one to be off for visibility of the council. Okay. Council, any other comments? Seeing none, um, all those approved, say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously for um, ratifying the third two-year extension with waste management. Next for Parks and Public Works is AB 23-029, resolution awarding Fury Site Works for the Williams Edition Water Main Replacement Project. Councilor Benson, would you please read the summary and motion? You betcha. This agenda bill seeks to award, uh, approval to award a public works contract to Fury Site Works Incorporated for the Williams Edition Water Main Replacement Project and to authorize the mayor to sign the contract. The water main replacement will repla replace the antiquated undersized asbestos concrete water main, which is the type of water pipe that experiences frequent failures leading to emergency repairs and disruptions of service. The replacement will bring the Williams Edition neighborhood up to current city and state water main standards and alleviate the expensive disruptions of service that occur with AC pipes at increasing frequency. Move to adopt the resolution number 1636 awarding a public works contract to Fury Site Works Incorporated for construction of the Williams Edition water main replacement project and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. So it's moved by Councillor Benson and second by Mayor Pro Tem Holloway. Um, is there any public comment regarding this item? So please raise your hand. Not seeing anyone line or in City Hall wishing to make public comment. Councillor, is there any discussion? Councillor Johnson. I uh, just wanted to make sure the council was uh, aware that um, when we look at uh, in the slideshow of um, uh, on one of the slides, they have a breakdown of the different bids. And this one, uh, we were all on the committee uh, somewhat surprised by how low that amount seemed that uh, this company was offering relative to the others. Um, it's substantially lower than the others. However, uh, our expert staff have assured us that this is a, a reputable company and that's a reasonable estimate. Um, and I, I trust their judgment. Thank you. Councilor Benson? Yeah, I think the, the next cheapest bid was almost $300,000 more. And they went up to, I think, $960,000 more. Um, so it was, it was considerably less, still $1.2 million. So still a substantial sum, but, um, uh, but what we've been assured that they do this kind of work all the time. They're local and uh, that um, they're, they don't seem to be, they, they did, uh, the uh, contract was checked to see if there was anything that looked strange or like they were cost cutting or anything like that. And that wasn't seen. It was, um, it seemed a completely above board bid. Thank you. Did, do we end? No, okay. Any other comments or questions? 
Councillor Christensen. I was just going to say that seeing that we've had four failures in six months, I think it's pretty clear that we need to get this addressed as mm -hmm. soon as possible. I also uh, appreciated Director Chambliss's comments um, regarding having Parks and Public Works out there having to serve in the trenches to get this addressed on each of those occasions and how it's not the safest spot where we want our folks to be. So I think it's important to get it addressed as soon as possible. So thanks. Right. I thank you for that. I think our residents would be very happy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other comments? Oh, Mayor Pro or Councillor Hall or can't yeah. Councillor Mayhew. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, I I just got a little confused by something in the agenda bill. I I think this I cleared it up, but I just want to be sure. This is something that's in our existing uh, capital budget. It's it's covered by our existing capital budget. Is that correct? Yes. Got it. Thank you. Did you want to? Did you want to talk to her? Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. Um, yes. Councilor Benson. Uh, yeah. Uh, to um, Councilmember Mayhew's question, uh, we we asked about that same issue, and actually, uh, the amount that this is going to cost is less than was uh, initially budgeted. So, um, and and. Uh, additionally, Councilmember Johnson, I believe, asked if this was going to impact any uh, any projects that we foresee in the in the near future, and it is not expected to. Right. Thank you. Did I get that right, Councilmember. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Nay. Motion passes unanimously and for resolution awarding Fury site works for the Williams Edition Water Main Replacement Project. So is there any further report for Parks and Public Works Committee? Nothing further, no. Okay. Is there any report for Finance Administration Committee? Uh, no additional report. Okay, so moving on, next item is Mayor's report. Okay, so so starting out, so council on March 22nd, we have, we are the Snoqualmie City Council is hosting the Snoqualmie Valley Governments Association in Snoqualmie. So I hope that you will plan to attend. Um, there we have several speakers. We will hear from the CEO of the Snoqualmie Valley Health, um, Renee Jensen. We will hear from King County Assessor, John Wilson. He will talk on assessments and property taxes. Cause I think several of you, everyone just got their property tax bill. Um, we will hear legislative updates from Brandy Delange. She's the AWSC government relations advocate. And we hope to hear from some of our state legislatures and also our King County Council member. They will also provide updates. Um, Council, right now we're still in the legislative session, so please consider reaching out to our legislatures on our council priorities. Mm -hmm. And that includes requesting state funding for the capital, for the community center expansion, and then also, you know, continuing talking with our legislatures to ensure that we that the funding for state route 18 widening is in this biennium and is not pushed out we don't want to see that project out there for six years later um, if you haven't scheduled time with our council retreat facilitator una mcclendon please um, follow up and schedule time and plan to meet with her before council retreat I'd like to recognize our stormwater and urban forestry supervisor, Phil Bennett, their senior urban forester, Jason Battles, and our park superintendent, Kevin Friesen, for their ongoing response to the felled trees and sidewalk repairs that happened during the snow and ice storms that we had. So they lost quite a few trees and they continue getting calls on, on different trees. And so they've been very active and um, excellent response. And our public has an opportunity for public input. This is um, in you know, January 2023, we, the city launched our extensive two-year project to update the comprehensive plan. And this is our long-range planning tool that um, will be established for over the next 20-year period. So the City of Snoqualmie Draft Housing Needs Assessment and Draft Housing Action Plan are available for public to provide comments directly with an interactive document. So they get online and they can um, interact or write into the document. 
Um, community, engage, community engagement is the key component in creating our final housing action plan that will help achieve our Snoqualmie's housing goals. So hopefully our public will get out there and, um, and provide input. And then we also had two brave souls from our police department, Pamela Mandry and Nicholas Schlugen, who participated in the polar plunge at Elkai Beach this past weekend in 28 degree weather, benefiting the Special Olympics. So thank you. So that's what I have for our mayor's report. And now, um, is there, are there any commission committee liaison reports from council? Okay. Um, what about regional committees? We have different representatives on regional committees. We have um, PSC, PSRC, Economic Development District Board. Um, Councilmember Mayhew, do you have any update on that? I don't think he could hear you. Okay. What were you asking me? Oh, so we're doing regional committees. So any report on PSRC Economic Development District Board? I don't have any report. Okay. Um, Councilman Christensen, King Conservation District Advisory Committee. Uh, so for KCD, they just finished their election. The uh, ballots were due on the 14th. I don't think it's been certified. Um, I looked earlier, but we're still waiting to see that was for um just one of the two positions they're still trying to get on so that they'll be on with a regular um ballot process um okay. it's kind of working its way through the legislature at this time and then i'm also on PIC as well which is the public issues committee i don't have the upcoming agenda yet it has not been published but it looks like they're going to be looking at water quality governance metro service recovery plan and the homelessness authority okay but I don't have specifics on that at this time, unfortunately. Great, thank you. Councilor Watton, Regional Law, Safety and Justice Committee, any update on that? I was out of town for a meeting this week, this past week. Um, so I will be back in a month with more information. Excellent, thank you. What about anything on Snoqualmie Watershed Forum? Councilor Benson? Water remains wet and we are just trying to secure enough of it. Thank you. And I'm on the King County Flood Control District, which we have not had a first meeting yet. That will happen in March, later later in the month. And I also sit on the Regional Transit Committee. And we re recently held a meeting, and it was actually to approve the Metro work plan for the year. And so each month there will be um, some different particular sub subject, and we will um, they will provide presentations on it or we will take actions on it. So that is all. Any regional council committees I'm missing? Okay. I think moving on. So the next item we have, actually we have several executive sessions. Um, so we have three, we have a closed session and two executive sessions this evening. And the closed session pursuant to RCW 42.30.1404B for the planning or adoption of a strategy or position to be taken during the course of any collective bargaining proceedings or reviewing the proposals made in the negotiations or proceedings while in the progress lasting approximately, should be lasting approximately 60 minutes. And those that will participate would include finance and HR director Ferguson, Budget Manager Boutte, City Administrator Sauerwein, Management Analyst Hornsby, and City Attorney Sturbank will join us for the closed session. And then the next one, we will have two executive sessions. Um, one is pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101I to discuss litigation that has been specifically threatened to which the agency, the governing body, or a member acting in an official capacity is or is likely to become a party or um, litigation or legal risks of a proposed action or current practice that the agency has identified when public discussion of litigation or legal risks is likely to 
to result in the adverse legal or financial consequences to the agency. And this should last about 15 minutes. And this one will also include finance and HR Director Ferguson, City Administrator Sarah Wine, and City Attorney Sturbank. And then the final one will be executive session pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101B to discuss potential acquisition of real estate by lease or purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause a likelihood of increased price pricing. Um, this will also last about 15 minutes and we'll have um, community director, community development director Artecha, city minister Sarwine and city attorney Sturbank will join us for that. So we will start off, we will take a five minute recess and um, the overall amount of time will be an hour and 35 minutes um, in closed or executive session. Um, no action is anticipated following conclusion of the closed and, and executive sessions. And so the city will adjourn directly from, the, from those sessions and not return to open session. The city clerk will be informed of the concluding times for each of the session, which we reflected in the meeting minutes. And we have been sent a, a um, link, a new Zoom link. So we will exit out of this link and we will join the other. So we anticipate that we will be done probably around, what is it? It's like 9, 10, something like that. So, all right. Any other questions or comments before we exit out of this particular, this link? And those that will be coming back in, so um, you will need to stick around. I think you know, probably Community Development Director Artecha. Um, we will probably text you, or I don't know if you'll be somewhere in the building, but we will come find you. Okay. All right. There you go. Thank you. We will continue into, we will start into our um, executive session or closed session in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 